So this video is clickbait, honestly. It's as many pictures as I could find that were interesting of Harry and Meghan's mansion in Malibu. Tell me what you think. And if you like it, please uh, like and uh, please do subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So I'm not going to lie. I'm just trying to get some subscribers, trying to get my channel noticed, and I'm hoping you guys can help me. But uh, I'll make it interesting, too, because I'm going to do a full Celtic cross, maybe some more on Harry and Meghan and Archie and Lily and the mansion and the career. And let's see how much I can squeeze into this video. And there's a ton of pictures, so I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. This is long, and it's going to have some pictures in it. But it's, it's, it's comparing Harry and Meghan year by year by year by year by year from birth till now and it's pretty interesting to see what they were doing at individual times so I hope to stick through it I think you'll enjoy it Markle. so in 1981 Rachel Megan Markle was born on August 4th so she's a Leo raised in Canoga Park Los Angeles California mom and dad were divorced when she was six she has a close relationship with her african-american mother and her white American father was a director of photography she frequently visited television sets as a child and has estranged and considerably older paternal half-sister and brother with whom she did not grow up now, in 1984, for Harry, uh, on September 15th, uh, he's born. He's Prince Henry Charles Albert David, born at the Lido, Lindo Wing, excuse me, of St. Mary's Hospital, London. He's christened, and he's christened at St. George's Chapel, Windsor. St. George's Chapel is going to come up a lot here. In 1985, baby Harry goes on tour of, on a tour of Italy with mom and dad. 1987, the three-year-old attends Miss Minor's nursery school. And in 1989, it's Weatherby Prep in Kensington, London, for the five-year-old's primary education. But Megan now is attending the Hollywood Little Red Schoolhouse and was raised as a Protestant. Now, in 1991, Diana and Charles take Harry and William on a four-day visit to Ontario, Canada. Hmm. 1992, at eight years of age, Harry attends Ludgrove School, Berkshire. Also, Prince Charles and Diana separate, 1992. But in 1992, at age 11, from Megan, she wrote, she wrote to Procter & Gamble about a TV dishwashing soap commercial she saw that uh, suggested women only wash dishes. So three months later, uh, Procter & Gamble changed the commercial. Later, Megan graduated from LA's Immaculate Heart All-Girl Private Catholic School. Then in 1996, Diana and Charles' marriage was dissolved, and they share custody of the boys. In 1997, of course, Diana was killed in a car crash in Paris. Harry, 12 or 13, and William were told at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. The brothers walk behind their mother's coffin. Harry enrolls coffin. Harry enrolls at Eton College. In 1998, Harry and William make a formal request for the media to show allow them privacy. Then in 1999, for Megan, she's at Northwestern University in Illinois, and her acting career began, but she had difficulty getting roles for not being black enough and not being white enough. So she appeared in daytime uh, soap opera General Hospital, TV shows Century City, uh, The War at Home, plus CSI New York and Fringe. She also had modeling jobs and was a briefcase girl. Remember that on the U.S. game show Deal or No Deal, those briefcase girls all standing there? And then between acting jobs, she worked as a freelance calligrapher and uh, taught uh, bookbinding. After her junior year of college, she attended the American Embassy in Buenos Aires, uh, considering a political career, and also attended a study abroad program in Madrid. Now, in 2003, Megan got a bachelor's degree with a double major in theater and international studies from Northwestern School of Communication. But in 2003, for Harry, he's 19 years old. He leaves Eaton with two A-levels in art and geography. Then, in 2004, Megan began dating a film producer, but in 2004, Harry takes a gap year in Australia working on a cattle station and helping with orphaned children in Lesotho, South Africa. I've got a
In 2005, 21-year-old Harry attends the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and also begins a relationship with Chelsea Davy. Remember her? In 2006, Harry completes officer training and becomes second lieutenant in the Blues and Royals. 2007, Harry cannot serve in Iraq. He's a high-risk uh, target and endangers the regiment, so he goes to train with soldiers of the Canadian forces in Canada. Back to Canada. In 2008, a soldier Harry is sent to Afghanistan. He receives the Operational Service Medal. And in 2009, the relationship with Chelsea Davy, that's over. He trains to fly military helicopters. In 2010, he completes his flying training. But Megan, in 2010, appears in the films Get Him to the Geek and Remember Me and was paid $187,000 for uh, Remember Me and for The Candidate was paid $171,429. That's very specific. Uh, in 2011 now, Megan marries a film producer and starred, Megan starred in the legal drama Suits. Um, and she lived for nine months a year in Toronto and was paid $50,000 per episode or $450,000 a year. She was also in the film Horrible Bosses, but in 2011 for Harry, he passes the Apache uh, attack helicopter flying test and is promoted to Captain Wales. Also, he's the best man for William and Catherine's wedding at Westminster Abbey. And then for Harry in 2012, he's 28 years old. He's part of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee touring Belize, the Bahamas, and Jamaica. So he tours all those places. He begins a relationship with Cressida Bonus, the granddaughter of Earl Howe. Uh, or, or Earl Howe. I'm not sure if he's an Earl or if his name's Earl. Probably he's an Earl. Anyway, Harry represents Queen Elizabeth II at the closing ceremony of the London Olympic Games, and the American celebrity website TMZ publishes pictures of Harry naked in a Las Vegas a hotel room. Then Harry begins a four-month tour of Afghanistan. Uh, 2013, though, Megan gets divorced from that film producer. Uh, but in 2013, Harry makes a six-day official visit to the United States. He qualifies as an Apache aircraft commander and makes a tour of Australia. Then in 2014, for Megan, she establishes a lifestyle blog called The Tig and gained recognition for her fashion sense. But Harry, in 2014, launches the Invictus Games for injured servicemen and, for injured servicemen and William. And Harry... Uh, Harry and Cressida Bonus end their relationship. He visits Brazil, Chile, and Chile and attends the World War I centenary com commemorations for Folkestone, England, and in Folkestone, England, and Belgium. And Harry visits uh, Lesotho, South Africa. Now, in 2015, Megan creates two lines of clothing. But Harry, in 2015, he leaves the armed forces for more royal duties on behalf of the Queen, is made a knight commander of the Royal Victorian Order, Victorian Order and he returns to Lesotho for the opening of the Mamahato uh, Children's Center in South Africa. Now, in 2016, Megan backs Hillary Clinton, denounces Trump. Her relationship with the Canadian celebrity chef and restaurateur ended after two years, and later she began dating Prince Harry. And when the referendum the referendum on the Brexit was announced. She expressed disappointment on Instagram. I don't know. 2016, Harry visits Nepal and helps rebuild a school damaged in the earthquake. He meets May American actress Meghan Markle, Markle at a club in Toronto, and they begin dating, like I just said. Harry takes an HIV test to raise awareness. Or was that so he and Meghan could do more stuff? Um, um, then he takes a two-week tour of the Caribbean on behalf of the Queen, and the relationship with Meghan Markle is officially announced. 2017, Megan recommended a book on Instagram, uh, Who Rules the World, was the name of it, by a left-wing intellectual. Uh, Harry and Megan appear at the Toronto Invictus Games. Their engagement was announced by Prince Charles, and there were positive comments regarding a mixed-race member of the royals. She retired from acting and became a British citizen. In the meantime, the two uh, with Harry, uh, they make their first public appearance at the third Invictus Games in Toronto, Canada. Harry's appointed president of the Africa Parks, a, cons a conservation organization in Africa. Then in 2018, Meghan quit suits to marry Harry and started engagements as the Duchess of Sussex. The uh, Archbishop of Canterbury baptized and confirmed her into the Church of England in the Chapel Royal at St. James Place, and there was a private exchange of vows in the couple's garden, but l not a legally recognized marriage. The marriage ceremony was at St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. They lived in Nottingham College, Cottage at Kensington Palace. At Kensington Palace and later Frogmore Cottage in the park of Windsor Castle. And they traveled to Sydney for the 2018 Invictus Games and a Pacific tour of Australia, Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand. And a letter with white power and a racist note to Meghan was sent to St. James Palace. Hmm. In 2018, Harry is appointed president of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. He's appointed lieutenant commander of the Royal Navy, major of the British Army, and squadron leader of the Royal Air Force. Harry and Meghan marry at St. Uh, George's Chapel, Windsor. 
and the Queen creates Harry, Duke of Sussex, Earl of Dumbarton, and Baron Killeel. Harry becomes a personal aide-de-camp to the Queen. Uh, Kensington Palace announces Meghan is pregnant as the couple begin a tour of you know Australia, like I said. Now, in 2019, Meghan gives birth to Archie in May. Then there's that South African tour of Malawi, Angola, South Africa, Botswana, and Archie uh, made it, uh, being with them, made it their first official tour as a family. 2019, Harry sues the Sun and the Mirror over phone hacking. Now, 2020, this is a big piece here on both of them. 2020, they withdraw from royal engagement, step down to senior roles due to privacy issues and hostile treatment by the British tabloids, and settle in California pursuing business ventures and charity work. Megan suffered a miscarriage. And they bought a house in Montecito. They bought a house in Montecito, California. They signed with the Harry Walker Agency to conduct public speaking engagements, signed a private uh, commercial deal with Netflix for scripted and unscripted series, film, documentaries, and children's programming. And she had invested in a coffee company in Southern California. Plus, they signed a deal, a multi-year deal, with Spotify to produce and host their own program and host their own programs through their audio producing company named Archwell Audio. The uh, debut episode was released. Uh, they announced she would executive produce a Netflix animated series called Pearl of a 12-year-old girl's adventures inspired by influential women in history. Uh, for Harry and Meghan, they divide time between the UK and USA and become financially independent. They'll maintain their current patronages and set up a new charitable foundation. Harry and Meghan step back from royal duties and do not receive public funding. They no longer use the HRH titles, nor represent the Queen, and they repay £2.4 million used to refurbish Frogmore Cottage. Now, in 2021... Uh, their TV interview with Oprah. Enough said. Uh, she gives birth to Lily in June in California. And for her 40th birthday, she launched a campaign asking people to spend 40 minutes mentoring women uh, re-entering the workforce worldwide. An American uh, private investigator handed over to The Sun her, Megan's social security number and cell phone number and address. Now, address. Now, in 2021, of course, we all know Harry's grandfather, the Prince uh, Philip, dies. He attends a funeral in St. George's Chapel, Windsor. Pregnant Megan remains in the U.S., advised not to travel. Harry criticizes the BBC following publication of the Dyson Report, which revealed that deceit had been used by Martin Bashir, or Bashir to obtain the uh, famous interview with his mom, uh, Diana. Uh, he stated that his mother's death was a direct result of the interview and uh, stated that the media, and, and did what to the media? The media, he, he scathed at the media for its continued use of fake news and deceitful practices to obtain interviews and statements. And that's a lot, but that's what I have on the two of them side by side uh, for um, birth to now. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to, to know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought has gone into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing, and I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake, but you can see how each card has a little warmness about it. It kind of makes them uh, fun to use, and they're beautiful cards. 
And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often. At least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is the Crow Tarot. Okay, so that was quite a lot. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this Crow Tarot. Uh, there's another deck I usually like for this couple, but I like this deck because crows are smart. Uh, they don't give up. They continue at something until they find an answer. And um, I just like uh, the spirit of crows. Uh, they can also be pretty cruel, and uh, but then uh, a lot of birds who eat other birds, which crows do, uh, are the same way. And so I don't know that it's necessarily cruelty or just a survival instinct. Of course, it's just a survival instinct. Crows can't, uh, don't have emotions, so they can't be cruel. Now the questions, what kind of a a questions can we deal with? So let's see. Let's ask um, of the two, will they remain in their Montecito mansion? I like that. Uh, Harry and Meghan's Montecito mansion. That should be a, a reality TV show like the Kardashians. So will they remain in their Montecito mansion, which looks like a castle? I mean, look at the pictures. And um, and it has flavors of an English garden, and uh, it's right close to the beach. I mean, it's got a lot. Plus, they got better weather than a lot than England, anyway. Uh, not England, but uh, London, I should say. Uh, forgive me, uh, all of England. Um, so, let's see, let's see. So, will they remain in their Montecito mansion? Uh, then I want to ask uh, if... Um, um, Two families, Harry and Meghan and William and Kate, will uh, mend uh, their rift. Um, and so that's two questions. Then, let's see. Um, will Harry and Meghan make regular visits to the, the UK once Prince Charles is king? So, will they live in the mansion? Will uh, the two couples mend their... Uh, argument and um, will will Harry and Meghan visit Charles uh, when he's king and then just a little bit about what the relationship will be like between the two couples Harry and Meghan William and Kate once William is king that's pretty interesting so let's take these uh, cards right here we'll take six for that first question one two three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're going to take these six cards and start with the very first question. Will they remain in their uh, Montecito, uh, Mon Montecito uh, mansion for a long time? The signifier card of that is the Knight of Wands. Well, you know, the Wands are plans, and the Knight is the fellow who's going to fight for those plans, and I'm going to say that that's the plan. The signifier card is that that is this Knight, Harry's plan, to remain there for a long time. I think they've picked out a home they feel like they can raise their children in. So that's what we're going to go with for that signifier. The challenge to that, though, is the Ace of Cups. So, the you know, Cups are compassion, emotion, and there's a lot of that overflowing right now. And you know, it's also love. And so I will say the challenge to uh, remaining in that Montecito man mansion is all the emotion involved with them uh, not living um, in England, but also tempered by the amount of love that they uh, have for each other. The base of that reading about whether they will remain in the Montecito mansion is the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups. I wonder if this could refer to the Queen, Queen Elizabeth. Um, if somehow them being outside of London puts a halt to all the controversy with the press, um, that's what I'm going to say that represents right there. Because of the Queen of Cups, um, that will be, and it seems counterintuitive, but I think that will be one of the reasons why they will remain outside of the country uh, of England um, uh, because of all the controversy that they stir when they're in England and they can't fight back at it because the royal family seems to be manipulating that press to only the royal family's uh, advantage, my opinion, okay? Now, the past of that reading for whether they'll stay in the Montecito Mansion is the Empress, okay? The Empress in the past. And I'm going to say this is also the Queen. The uh, Empress 
is is okay the queen is the main reason and like i said it seems counterintuitive but that's the main reason they're staying behind or staying uh mostly in the montecito mansion in the sky for that reading then is the hierophant yep that's all the rules all the regulations uh, that's what the hierophant represents oh no it's not the hierophant i'm sorry this is spilt this is the five of cups okay so let me rethink about this so the five of cups oh yeah so the five of cups is really um uh worrying over all the uh compassion and emotion that you spilt but you've still got some left these are the two kids this is uh, archie and lily i'm gonna tell you right now and this is what uh, uh harry's left behind um so that's the sky there that's just something that has to be dealt with and then the uh outcome for this first part of whether they will stay in the montecito mansion is going to be Again, the Knight of Cups. So he started out as a knight right here and uh, with a plan. And uh, it ends up that he's the knight uh, with the compassion and the emotion and making these uh, difficult emotional decisions. And I think that means, yes, that's they're staying in the Montecito Mansion. And since I'm drawing the cards, I get to decide what it means. Now, in the um, second part of this, these last four cards, I want to ask... Um, what was that question anyway? If uh, the rift um, between Harry uh, and his father will um, still remain once his father is king. So let's see what the signifier of that question is. And that's, oh, this is very good. This is the Ten of Cups. This is um, happy family, uh, sunshine and rainbows. And wow, I hope this means that that uh, rift will be mended. Um, that may be a part of Charles's uh, legacy as king uh, to maybe draw the people back in to him uh, as a compassionate king. The, um, the environment that that's in, however, coming back is the King of Swords. Look at that. So, so yeah, this is Charles. The environment is that that will have to be in is when Charles is the king. The um, hopes and the fears for that is justice and that's the, the perceived justice that the the uh the country uh, england will uh see that as some sort of a bringing back together of the family and then the likely outcome of that whole thing regarding that question is the six the six what is the six six of wands six of wands are celebrations oh my god that's fantastic here are the wands right here so that's celebration so that seems to be the answer here so the question is uh will there remain in montecito Yes, because Harry's made uh, a decision as the knight of planning of wands uh, that this is where they need to be. It's challenged by all the emotions that are spilled. It's uh, underscored by the queen's uh, 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 feelings, but she has to put the country first. So rather than go back and stir up a, a turmoil in the country, they'll stay out of the picture and let that kind of... Uh, wash over and then uh the past just reaffirms that the queen is a very important part of this process even though it all seems counterintuitive we want them to go back share the babies with the queen but this is what's being done for england for the queen and then the sky that is just uh, reiterating harry's uh, loss of what he's left behind but what he has still uh, left and then the final outcome of course is this knight of cups harry is still a knight uh, but a knight of compassion and then with his father we're saying here um, yeah, there will there will be a mend. There'll be happy family be, be, because that will be a part of uh, Charles's uh, legacy to the monarchy, and uh, it will be perceived as justice and uh, celebrations. So this is fantastic. I love this. That was a very good set of questions. Now we're going to go to William and Harry, and William as King and Harry. So let's see how this goes. We've got to put these back into the into the deck here. So it's hard for us as our regular everyday people who, you know, we're just trying to make our lives work every day, whereas that royal family is trying to keep the monarchy together. That's the first thought there, not necessarily uh, everything else. And all the things Harry is doing do seem counterintuitive, but if he's going to make that break, it's the only way to do it. And um, and if they, when they the minute they show up in, in England... <coughs> all that uh, uh, press um, ugliness starts up again. So now we're going to change this over. Come on, cards. Don't do me wrong. I want to talk about William and Harry. William and Harry and Kate and Megan. William and Harry and Kate and Megan. William and Harry and Kate and Megan. I, I, I hope. I think the questions I'm going to ask here is uh, will uh, the rift 
of William and Harry be mended. Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Will the rift between William and Harry be mended? Okay, let's see how we can go here. The signifier card, William and Harry, will the rift be mended? The emperor. William is, when William is the emperor. That could be one interpretation. Let's see, the challenge to that is going to be the Two of Cups, which is, okay, this is making a deal. These are couples uh, coming together um, in a loving way. And so the challenge to that, uh, William as the emperor, and the challenge is this loving uh, union between the brothers. <sighs> okay, let's keep going a little bit further. The base of this whole thing is the Ace of Cups. So this shows up again, like from the previous reading. So all these emotions are what really, really are driving all of this, all of this, all of these emotions are what's keeping all of this controversy alive. And the past of this reading is the Magician. Okay, finally having all the tools that you need to bring something to fruition. Okay, this looks very good. That rift cannot possibly last that long. I'm going to say, well, let's finish. And then the sky for that reading is the chariot. Coming along quickly. So it looks like at some point, this thing is going to move along swiftly. Okay? I like that. Or that's the hope for it anyway. And then the likely outcome for the rift between the two of them is the nine of swords, which is just nightmares. It's not that it's something easy. It's painful. And, um, and that's what we have to deal with. Uh, healing that pain. Now let's talk about specifically when William is king. And it looks like the card has jumped ahead of me on that. So when William is king, uh, how would that relationship be? The signifier for that is five, six, seven, eight of cups. Having to leave something behind that you really uh, love, that's really compassionately, emotional, emotionally important to you. That's a signifier of, of um, what will happen to the two of them when William is king. That's interesting. Let's see what the uh, environment that that's in. The environment that that's in is the king of wands. So he's going to have to be the king of planning. Okay. What we have there is this hurt. And uh, William is going to have to be the one that makes sure that this thing is, is mended. The um, hopes and the fears for this are the knight of cups. Okay, this is Harry. Remember, he was the knight in the, in the previous one. And this is Harry again. So he's going to come along as a knight to the king and really carry a lot of emotional um, authority into that. And then the final outcome, five, six, seven, is uh, sadly, the seven of swords is a theft, betrayal. And so right above that nine of swords of nightmare. So it looks like there's going to be some sort of controversy involved in that. And um, I'm going to leave it at that. I could pull another card, but it seemed to me like I'm just milking it to try to get the uh, the resolution that I would prefer is that everything's wonderful and happy. So um, uh, during uh, will the uh, first question is, will the rift be mended? And this seems to indicate that it could take as long as when William is finally king. That's very interesting because that can be a very, that's years and years and years. I hate to believe that unless this could mean uh, Charles, but I'm talking about William. The, um, uh, challenge to it is the two of cups, which are friendships, harmonies, uh, agreements. So the challenge could be getting to that agreement for the two of them. Maybe with the idea that William is soon, because soon is a relative term in a monarchy to be emperor. Uh, the base of the reading was the same uh, uh, ace of cups that was in the previous draw, which is just overflowing with emotion. It's a great big offer of emotion, to tell you the truth. And then the past is having all the tools as a magician to make it happen. And the sky is uh, aiming to get it done quickly. But then um, here we say, look, there's a lot of emotion, passion that is that is being walked away from. Again, I just think this is reiterating that it's when William is king, Harry is the knight of compassion, and there's still going to be hurt feelings uh, with them. Gosh. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to four more cards. I'm going to leave these off to the side. Shuffle these up a little bit, and I want to know, eventually, will the brothers find a way to be happy, loving brothers again? I'm going to pull three cards only. Three cards only. I'm thinking in my head four, so I hope this doesn't mess it up. But three cards only. Three cards only. Will the brothers get back together? Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so it, this can be a crapshoot. Um, wow, the world. So the end of an era and the beginning of another one. That could mean... 
when Charles is gone, or it could mean, uh, you know, the queen. And then the final one is the nine of cups. And the nine of cups is having everything you ever wanted. So I'm going to make the selfish decision to say, yeah, that will eventually happen. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. Thank <laughs> you.